The great thing about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is that it is one of the foremost examples of what is referred to as pure cinema. In this video essay, I will not be going over the details of that as much as I really want to. But don't worry, I will have a movie channel uh, soon-ish. I don't know when, but you know, I want to. For fun. Uh, so before we get into the good stuff here, you know, the old flying types, which I'm sure Leatherface could throw his chainsaw at and hit with uh, startling accuracy, he moves fast for such a big dude. Uh, yeah, so I have to get through some stuff. Firstly, and mostly, I think it might even be the only thing, I don't know, I'm not organizing, are you serious? Uh, is that I have a Patreon. I've, I've had one for a few years, actually. It's in the description of all my videos. Um, but I tend to not plug it in the video itself, foolishly. Uh, and some of you are generous enough to donate, and uh, I thank you very much for that. And for the rest of you, what's your problem? Um, kidding, of course, obviously. But I am going to start incentivizing that Patreon a little more by, ex uh, by uploading videos exclusively to it. So tune in to that, because they are going to be juicy. Oh, I remember the second thing now. Uh, I also wanted to start doing videos on this channel where I... Uh, someone requested it, I forget who, but it was a great idea. Uh, basically that you submit teams, like in Gens I know, obviously, I can't help you with a Gen 9 OU team. But in like Gens 3 through 5 or whatever, then uh, if you submit a team you have... Or 3 through, you know, 6, let's say. Because uh, 2 is pretty simple, so... And 3 through 6 is generally uh, of wider interest. So just 3 through 6, if you got uh, teams you like, then you, you can throw them in the comments. And then once in a while I'll make a video where I uh, uh, give ideas on how to make the team better. Uh, so a team rating service kind of thing. Uh, and if you want to make it for DPP Ubers as well, then I'm not going to complain. <laughs> I would love that, in fact. So, or DPPUU. I have to make a video on DPPUU soon. Um, I was away for a little bit, and my uh, list of videos I want to make just keeps growing. It's wonderful. So, um, yeah. And finally, for those who don't know, I am making a movie, and the trailer is coming out soonish. ish in, uh, At the time of this video, you know, about a month, give or take. Uh, and, yeah, I'm wondering what I can do to, uh, sweeten the deal for any potential donations. Uh, I know some people have said, I will donate if you make this video and that video, and those were immediately added to my video making list, trust me. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know, you know, maybe I have to promise things like, oh, I'll stick my face in the video if you donate money, or more money, or whatever. You know, for certain amounts of donations, I will... You know what? I'm going to corner the market. I'm going to be like, uh, yeah, if you donate this much money, then I will take my shirt off. And if you donate even more money, then I won't take my shirt off. You know, whatever. I'll, I'll figure something out. I'm a, I have an acute business acumen. Uh, that's not true. But, you know, what else I have an acute acumen for is flying types in competitive Pokemon, huh? That only took... A little over three and a half minutes I am getting better at cutting down so flyers why are they so special well since generation one they have been renowned for their immunity to the most one of the most spammable moves in the game earthquake which you know history of earthquake coming soon to a BKC YouTube channel near you uh, but in gen 1 the well first of all there aren't that many flyers and second of all, the earthquake, the, the primary earthquake in the tier comes from Rhydon. It's, uh, other earthquakes uh, are more coverage, and so they're not really threatening in and of themselves. You know, when you think about switching into earthquake, you think about switching into stab earthquake. That's what makes it dangerous. You know, even something with a big attack stat in future gens like Gyarados or Titar. You're not thinking, oh no, what if that spams earthquake against a healthy team? You're like, oh no, what if they start spamming their stabs at me? Uh, and uh, stab EQ is the thing to fear, and as you can see in the case of uh, the three flyers on the screen, Zapdos, Moltres, Articuno, they do not want to come anywhere near Rhydon. 
Well, Moltres and Articuno are a little more nuanced in that regard, but Rhydon is famous as a Zapdos counters. Uh, so, that whole switch into EQ dynamic uh, that uh, is characteristic of the flying type in later gens, not so present in earlier gens. It can be fun to, or, or fun, fine to pivot into like a Tauros or a Snorlax earthquake uh, with Zapdos, for example. That can be great. But it's not something you're going to see with uh, too much regularity. Especially because Snorlax and Tauros tend to drop EQ a lot. You know, it's uh, to keep Gengar from getting too comfortable against you. But other than that, uh, yeah. So, what is the purpose of the flying type uh, for Zapdos? Well, uh, some would say that it's actually a pain because it makes it weak to uh, Blizzard. <laughs> but, um, and Ice Beam. But, uh more importantly here is that it gives it a wonderful physical stab move because if Zapdos didn't have physical stab then it would be completely blanked by Chansey but with Drill Peck alongside its high attack stat and great crit rate means that it actually poses quite a significant threat so something like Chansey you know Alakazam gets hit hard by a Thunderbolt as well but it means it's not going to be pivoting in uh, even more or it's going to be pivoting in even less uh, so you have a special, a ferocious special attacker that hits on the other side as well. And it's not just for hitting the lower defense stat of special walls, it's also for hitting Exeggutor, one of the most common Pokemon in the tier, super effectively. One of the most common Pokemon in the tier that also happens to resist, uh, electric. So, uh, yeah, Zapdos has that massive special stat and, uh, high crit rate, so that stab T-Bowl is obviously its go-to. But its flying typing is very much on display and making it as threatening as it is, you know, uh, as a mixed attacker. Especially when it uh, agilities late game, but uh, Drill Peck has less to do there. Uh, T-Wave certainly helps, though, because when you're trying to muscle through something like uh, Chansey or Alakazam, then it really helps uh, if you're not just going for crit rates, but you also have the Thunder Wave Paralysis chance backing you up. Um, and, uh, like, either you, let, let's say you have Zapdos versus Chansey at full health, and you need to either, you need a crit, but you also don't want to get hit by it, then, or not full health, let's say, let's say, uh, you know, in range of a Drill Pack 2 AKO, that's a better example, you, then you could go for the Drill Pack a lot more securely because you're looking for either that Drill Pack crit or the T-Wave Paralysis, one of the two. So, yeah, Zapdos is a premier threat in uh, Gen 1. Now, the other two birds, you're not going to see nearly as much. They're not in OU. Articuno has the... Well, Articuno and Moltres. They have the strongest special attack in the game. Uh, even stronger than Mewtwo Psychic uh, with their Fire Blast. I mean, technically, Zapdos can match them if it uses Thunder, but it doesn't, you know. Zapdos would rather use Hyper Beam than Thunder. Uh, so, in terms of practical use, then, yes, uh, Moltres and Articuno have the hardest-hitting special attack in the game. And, uh, they're... Because they have the same special stat as, uh, Zapdos. It's so sad how Articuno lost that special attack stat afterwards. Um, and the, uh, 120 base power stab. So, they have the... S a similar approach... In terms of late game sweeping with agility and stab, and Articuno could try to finish off weakened uh, Chansey and Alakazam with uh, Hyper Beam, things like that, or actually more Starmie, because uh, Articuno is very hit or miss because it has a very it's like Zapdos in that regard because and not to say that Zapdos doesn't have ways around Rhydon. In and of itself, it doesn't, but, you know, Zapdos teams are built to, if there is a Rhydon, we're going to punish them in uh, so-and-so ways. Uh, Articuno has a really tough time if it runs into the Pokemon that, like, like Starmie is its worst nightmare. Or, actually, no, I take it back. Cloyster is even worse, because you can't even freeze it. Uh, things like that. Then you're really, really uh, up the creek without a paddle. But in the when Articuno does have a good matchup, it hits really hard. And uh, it's flying typing doesn't actually do... I mean, that whole pivot into EQ thing is nice because you hit Snorlax even harder than... Uh, Snorlax and Tauros, even harder than Zapdos because of that upgraded stab. So, um, 
Yeah, what was I... Sorry, I'm trying to organize the 16 things running through my mind, as always. Yeah, so uh, the flying typing is nice in that regard, but it also comes with the drawback of giving it a big... I mean, you can pivot into Rhydon's EQ and actually threaten it, unlike Zapdos. I mean, you're also mortally afraid of Rock Slide because of the quadruple weak, but hey, at least you have the option to switch in and threaten it out, so, you know... Because uh, if Zapdos pivots into Rhydon EQ, it's like, who cares? If anything, you just gave that Rhydon a free sub. So, um, yeah. You're not exactly forcing anything with it. Unless you're running Toxic Zapdos or some malarkey. So, yeah. Uh, Articuno wound up uh, getting kind of eclipsed by Moltres. Because Moltres is similar. But even if Moltres faces a wall... Because Articuno's version of wall breaking is spamming Ice Beam and Blizzard until it freezes something like Starmie or Chansey, right? Whereas uh, Moltres is not so fearful in the face of something like Cloyster, and it can very easily wall break for itself uh, because of the power of partial trapping from Fire Spin. And uh, I, we're going to keep this part a little brief because, again, Moltres' fi uh, flying typing is not doing that much for it. Other than that whole EQ pivot into uh, Snorlax and uh, Tauros thing. Which is nice, especially because Fire Blast uh, mean, has a 30% burn rate in Gen 1. And that means that you are threatening Snorlax and Tauros even more. Of course, uh, you are still threatened by Tauros' Blizzard. Because in Gen 1, Fire does not resist Ice. Uh, which is bizarre. I, I remember playing... Uh, Gen 1 as a kid, like, in-game. And, like, my Charizard would get hit super effectively by, by Ice Beam. I'd be, I'd be like, that's not correct. You know, Fire Resist. I mean, not in Gen 1, it doesn't. Uh, so, yeah, it doesn't love that. But uh, the flying typing is nice for that EQ Resist. And, you know, not too much else. Because uh, it's not using, you know, Drill Peck or anything. It, not that it would be nice, but uh, nothing, nothing too necessary. So... Uh, the power of Moltres is number one, Fire Blast. I mean, you can't spam it too freely because you want to sweep and you only have APP. But that 30% burn rate is really nice. Now, burn is only 6% in Gen 1, 6.25. But it is going to stack up really fast when you pair it with Fire Spin. And the partial trapping effect of Fire Spin in uh, Gen 1, alongside moves like Wrap and Clamp, means that the opponent takes a little bit of chip damage, but they also don't move. It's basically a flinch. Uh, so, yeah, it's called partial trapping because they can switch out from it. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, and when you stack that with uh, Fire Blast, and they're getting chipped into low levels uh, really quickly, and Moltres actually has quite a strong attack stat. So its Hyper Beam is threatening things like Chansey and Starmie way, way better than something like Articuno, who uh, comes in at a... Not measly, but, you know, relatively unimpressive 85. So, yeah, Moltres is a uh, really ferocious threat. And uh, compared to Zapdos in terms of the Rhydon matchup, like, first of all, Rhydon doesn't even like taking Fire Blast. It just t it takes so much damage, uh, despite it being resisted, because Moltres is really, really strong. And there's also the fact that it gets absolutely ruined by Burn. So... Uh, Moltres doesn't quite pivot into Rhydon as well, because you switch in and you, you know... Uh, but it's still, you know, better than Zapdos. You can still threaten it for a big chunk with Fire Blast, and then, uh, you know, maybe a burn on top of that. If that's what you need to play for, or if you don't need Moltres that much, or, uh, you know, what have you. So, yeah. Uh, also, the Agility Birds are great in Gen 1, because Agility uh, will offset Paralysis... Uh, drops. So even if you T-wave them, they you are not out of the water. All right, Gen 2. Now the flying type becomes a lot more significant because spikes exist. So there are not too many Pokemon that are not too many good Pokemon that are flying types. And so if you are immune to spikes, that is a big big deal. So, uh, this is why I think Zapdos is just as good as Snorlax in GSC. I have a whole video about it if you want to check it out. It's called Zapdos is just as good as Snorlax, or something like that, I forget. But it is just because it's so unkillable, not just because of Gen 2 Sleep Talk mechanics where Sleep Talk can call rest, but because it hits hard, 
it's always a threat even while asleep uh, because of sleep talk, which also keeps it healthy. And it does this while being immune to spikes. And, uh... <coughs> uh excuse me. I uh, had a lot of excitement for Zapdos uh, all congested there. Yeah, uh, it does this while being immune to spikes. And so you can't wear it down passively like you would something like Raikou or even Snorlax. And, of course, it's not just spikes, although spikes are, you know, a huge deal. You cannot overemphasize their impact uh, on competitive Pokemon in singles. But there's also the fact that its ground um, resist or immunity is now also going to make it an effective earthquake absorber because there are no ground types that really want to tango with it. I mean, okay, no one's saying that Zapdos has suddenly become a ride-on counter, but because of Hidden Power Ice, I mean, forget HP Water, because it's not the standard, and it just makes Zapdos completely dominate right on even more. But um, even with just Ice, it does so much damage. Zapdos is so strong, and the special defense it's going up against is not that high in this case. And, um, yeah, it's suddenly, you know, that's why Zapdos' typing is so good. It's an electric type, and the electric type's only weakness is ground. You pair it with flying, well, you know, so much for that. Now you have an electric type that switches into ground types. And you're th left thinking, well, <laughs> what do I use for electric types then? Uh, and there are other ground types that are, you know, every other ground type uh, is more popular than Rhydon at this point. Uh, and none of them take Zapdos on very well. Uh, in fact, Zapdos is one of their most pop uh, popular pivots. You know, Golem runs EQ, Spin, Roar, Boom. It doesn't fit Rock Slide into its moveset because uh, then you don't have uh, Rapid Spin. They're illegal together. HP Rock, you know, not great. Generally not worth it, especially because where are you fitting it into your move slot? Then you just have, you know, a much worse Pokemon overall. And you still are, I mean, you're doing a lot of damage to it, but you're still taking so much damage from Zapdos that it's far from an ironclad counter. Golem's whole thing is that it spins, and without spikes, Snorlax becomes better against Zapdos. And uh, it tries, it switches into Zapdos so that it can draw HP Ices for Snorlax to switch into, not because it answers Zapdos by itself. You know, I'm, I'm gonna stop there before I go on another This Is Why Zapdos Is The Best Pokemon Ever video, but... Good lord. Uh, Nidoking? Uh, oh, I forgot. I skipped over Marowak. Yeah, Marowak hits Zapdos quite hard, but doesn't heal and gets hit very hard by HP Ice. Any chip damage, and it's getting 2 a KO'd. D never gets 2 a KO'd from full, but, you know, the slightest bit of chip and, you know, two shots and it's gone. And even if Marowak, or even something as strong as Rhydon, hits uh, Zapdos with a Rock Slide, Zapdos is so bulky that it's not necessarily going to be down for the count. You know, it's not even going to be knocked into the red. So, makes Zapdos incredibly flexible, especially because, remember, all these Pokemon are being affected by spikes, Zapdos isn't, and in Gen 2, that is a really big deal. Uh, Nidoking famously struggles uh, against Zapdos. Not that it, you know, can't get through it, but uh, it's not going to be easy. Uh, so, Zapdos famously switches into it, especially because it likes to absorb sleep from Lovely Kiss. And Steelix is used as a Zapdos answer, even though it's spikes weak and doesn't heal and with the standard set of Curse, EQ, Roar, Boom, it can't actually threaten Zapdos without sacrificing itself. Uh, which is all sorts of risky and unreliable. So, yeah, Rhydon is the rarest ground in GSC, and it's got a similar dynamic. Uh, so, at least it can threaten it, but, you know, it's not easy at all. You really, really like spin support. Uh, I mean, that's why people like Golem, because it, it does provide that spin support. But something like Rhydon really enjoys it because that lets it pivot around Zapdos so much more easily. Uh, there's no Spikes immune answer to Zapdos, so it's just a bunch of Spikes weak Pokemon falling over themselves to not get destroyed by it. So you can see why Zapdos has an edge over so many others. Uh, the other most uh, significant uh, flying type in GSCOU is Skarmory, who is an ironclad pardon the minor pun, uh, Snorlax counter, uh, unless it runs fire or, um, thunder, mostly fire, but it's especially resilient because of that, uh, spikes weakness. 
I mean, it, it is a normal resist that is EQ resistant as well, or EQ immune as well. That is why it's a good Snorlax answer in the first place, of course. But that spikes weakness means it's incredibly hard to chip because you can't double switch. Like, uh, if you have a Firelax that's walled by, say, a Tyranitar or a Ghost type, then you can double switch on them and make them take spikes and wear them down and make something happen that way. With Skarmory, then you're not double switching to rack up spikes chip on Skarmory. You're double switching around Skarmory to rack spikes chip up on its teammates, like Raikou or Snorlax or Blissey or whatever. So, uh, Skarmory is famously resilient, not just against Snorlax, but all manner of physical threats. You know, Machamp uh, is a big one. You know, people always say, oh, well, Machamp has that stab that doesn't, um, that Skarmory doesn't resist. That's why it's threatening. Very true, but Skarmory is also faster and has super effective uh, flying stab against it. So, that's, uh, it's not quite that simple. Especially because Machamp has to deal with cross chop accuracy and, um,. Uh, and getting worn down by spikes, of course. <coughs> yeah, excuse my minor congestion. I've been working on something. Um, working to fight it off, actually. Yeah, Zapdos can also sometimes dip into Drill Peck, because uh, if it runs HP water, then it hits the grounds just as well, if not better, but uh, no longer has the coverage to hit Executor, and with Drill Peck, you now do. So, it's rare, though, because Rest Tog Zap Zapdos is just so hard to pass up. So, uh, yeah, Skarmory, wonderful in terms of, uh, you know, it's, it is largely so immovable for defense because of that Spikes immunity. But, of course, that EQ immunity, I mean, uh, Marowak, you know, against most stall teams, it's pretty much five Pokemon you know, destroyed by Thick Club EQ and Skarmory. <laughs> so, uh, Skarm is kind of a big deal in those matchups. Uh, it doesn't use its EQ immune much against Nidoking, or Golem, because Golem's EQ is not its threat. Spin is its threat. And a Nidoking packs Thunder coverage. Although, some Nidoking sets which do drop Thunder and don't replace it with Fire, uh, so they can run Thief and Lovely Kiss, then they wind up getting uh, walled by Skarmory. And then they realize, oh yeah, being walled by Skarmory is what Nidoking is not supposed to, you know, have. It's not what Nidoking is supposed to be doing. So, uh, they then reconsider the set and their team. So, yeah, uh, these other flyers, they they have their place for sure. Uh, Moltres is really cool because with Sunny uh, Charcoal Fire Blast, it can 2 KO Snorlax, which is obscene levels of power. Absolutely ridiculous. And with uh, so it's also a pretty good sleep absorber against Nidoking and Exeggutor. You know, it threatens Exeggutor with an Oko, which is quite rare. And it can, uh, with Sunny Day, it even messes with uh, Thunder accuracy from opposing electrics. So, which also helps it uh, draw good sleep talks against Nidoking. Uh, Articuno is very niche, but it can be used on certain stall teams. Just to, It's pretty much, uh, you know, a special wall uh, against, you know, all manner of weaker special attackers that don't use stab electric. But uh, it's immune to being um, frozen which is a big deal in the era of uh, Jinx and um, Gengar and Nidoking spamming ice moves. You know, those are entire teams. Just Jinx, Gengar, Nidoking spamming ice moves, looking for that all-important freeze. And, you know, you get that many opportunities to uh, spam it, then eventually it's going to happen, and GSC's uh, defrost rate is a paltry 10%, so uh, you got to be prepared against it by thwarting that freeze from happening at all. You know, it's generally more practical to run a Heal Bell Blissey, but, you know, then what happens if Blissey gets frozen? Uh, but yeah, Articuno's niche is uh, pretty small in that regard. Finally, Dragonite has two sets it can run, neither of which are really stunning, but, you know, it's it, it's pretty cool because it's a mixed attacker with Ice Beam, Thunder, Thunder Wave, and Dynamic Punch, which can be annoying, but again, it struggles against Zapdos, which kind of makes you wonder, what's the point? Uh, but it, it hits pretty hard. I can mess with Snorlax with uh, T-Wave plus the Strong Dynamic Punch. And it is uh, not affected by spikes, of course. That EQ immune is also nice, but that quadruple ice weakness means that you're not really going to be able to leverage it very well against Nidoking, whose uh, stab EQ is the most common that you're going to have to guard against. 
But, uh, I mean, it, it, it can be nice for sure. But it's just not something you're going to use as much. It's really more of a um, more of a spikes immune kind of flying weakness. Or uh, flying type. And uh, for the other Dragonite set, you run Rest, Sleep, Talk, Reflect, and Haze. And you do literally no damage, but you just sit on every Snorlax ever. And Machamp and Marowak and whatever curse you, you know, uh, whatever curse user you're going to face, ride on probably, you just pee pee stall them. It's uh, the definition of do nothing and passive and all that stuff, but. <coughs> Excuse me. But yeah, that's. Uh, that's what uh, it does, and it's, it hasn't been seen seriously in years. That's it. So, yeah, that's Gen 2. Gen 3. Uh, so, some changes, uh, some really big ones, are that spikes go up to three layers now. So, you really, you know, appreciate being immune to them. Flying types are no longer unique in being immune to spikes, because uh, there's also levitators now. But it's still very important because there's not that many levitating Pokemon. Uh, off the top of my head, it's just Gengar and Flygon in OU, I believe. Uh, am I... Oh, Claydol. Yeah, silly me. Uh, and... But yeah, there's a lot of uh, value in being spike immune. And it is mostly flying types. So, uh, we're not going to go over each of these in morbid detail. I just want to make sure there's nothing I'm really, uh, I'm not, nothing I, that really needs to be overlooked. I guess, uh, because Moltres and Charizard are very similar, I'll just, uh, chuck Gyarados here and do Moltres and Charizard at the same time. Yeah, okay, so, <coughs> I really apologize for my, uh, my well-being right now. I don't know why I'm apologizing for that. I'm still making the video. Uh, I just needed to get this one out there. So, Zapdos, as good as ever, it can do a million things. Offensive, defensive, and even within those two designations, it's got endless options. You know, HP Grass begins with its go-to because the new uh, go-to ground type in the tier is Swampert uh, for its ability to stave off um, Tyranitar and Aerodactyl, the... Uh, you know, they, they have very few counters, so you got to be able to slap on a check uh, to their Rock Slide backed by EQ combination. And so you have Swampert, and if you're going to run an Electric type, why have another Pokemon that's going to be walled by uh, walled by Perp? No, no it's uh, unnecessary. I mean, yes, there are things you're going to miss out on by not running HP Ice, but they are more manageable. You know, Selby is hit by Spikes and Sand... Uh, and, you know, it's vulnerable to Dugtrio. You know, Salamis isn't exactly keen to tango with uh, Zapdos either. You know, it can do all sorts of stuff. Uh, you know, it's got Baton Pass now. It's It can sweep with agility. It can sub -pass. Zapdos ha can do it all. Uh, it can run and do it all at the same time. It can run a mix of sets to incredible effect. That Spike's immunity is so, so big. And its EQ immunity is big because it doesn't just, well, <coughs> excuse, it's not just about switching into EQs anymore, it's about staving off choice banded EQs. Since before it's like, yeah, you know, it's non-stab EQ, big deal, but now with the advent of choice band, then yeah, something like Titar or Metagross spamming EQ can be pretty strong. Like uh, in the case of something like Salamence, then EQ is barely weaker than HP Flying. You know, uh, HP Flying is base 70, so with Stab, it goes uh, up by 35 to 105. So EQ is five base points lower than it. You know, it's like the, it's barely anything. The damage rolls are incredibly similar. So they can very easily, like this is something uh, CB Mens, uh, CBB used to do this with his CB Menses all the time. He'd lead off with EQ because it effectively hits Swamper just as hard. And if they're going to want to try and check that early game CBHP flying with T-Tar or Metagross or Jirachi, as many players do, then they just get destroyed. So, uh, yeah, that EQ, that, that ability to cover both HP flying and EQ... Uh, as well as resi resisting other physical attacks like Meteor Mash, make Zapdos uh, quite an effective Pokemon at taking on not just EQ, but the physical attacks that tend to accompany it. 
you know, it's not going to be an, uh, a perfect physical counter in and of itself. It still has a very significant rock weakness, of course, but it helps pivot around them. And that's much more important with the increased pace of advanced games. You know, the increased pace that comes with increased power. So, uh, Skarmory. Yeah, it's not just going to be valuable because it's immune to spikes and sand now. But it's also got spikes itself, and that warps the tier like almost nothing else. That's another video I gotta make soon. Some people think uh, Skarmory is the best Pokemon in the tier. You know, to say anything other than Tyranitar would be heresy for so long, and now people are saying things that are controversial yet brave and all that stuff. Um, yeah, Skarmory is, you know, absolutely comically... Uh, uh, you know, I won't even say borderline overpowered. It just kind of is overpowered, but in a balanced way. Uh, it, it just completely rules advanced, and uh, the teams with Skarmory are always pretty much the, the strongest and most consistent. Uh, and, yeah, you ask, well, Fortress can also Rapid Spin. Well, why would you want a Rapid Spin, you know, and go through the arduous process that entails when you could be immune to spikes in the first place and you know not care if they have zero layers or three and uh, also have that sweet sweet immunity to choice band earthquake and in Skarmory's case then you also ha have the um, ability to actually stop setup sweepers with roar you know fortress then you're a lot more vulnerable to a lot more things uh, especially because it has so much trouble fitting things it wants into its moveset. Skarmory, you roar, you cover everything. You know, or Whirlwind if you're afraid of... It, it's, uh, I don't know, I think Mr. Mime got banned. I think you could... No, you run roar because uh, that does not reveal that you don't have Drill Peck. And there's no more Mr. Mime to worry about, so... Yeah, uh... Skarmory is obscene, and that it's funny because it, one of its best traits is that it is Spikes immune, and one of the Pokemon that makes being Spikes immune so valuable is Skarmory. Well, it, it is the Pokemon that makes that. You know, if you only had the other Spikers and not Skarm, then Spikes would be a lot less prominent in advance. Um, it's the, the fact that Skarmory is both such an amazing Spiker and an amazing wall. You know, none of the other Spikers match Skarmory's all-around excellence as a Pokemon. So, uh, Gyarados, it loves using that... E that's First of all, that Spike's uh, immunity is wonderful. Actually, we should probably go in order of uh, impact, generally. You know, approximately. So, we'll, we'll go with Arrow here. Uh, Arrow is famous... No, we'll go with Mets first. Mentz is really good at switching in early game and dishing out immediate damage with its mix set or CB set. DD cleans up late game, but you can't switch it in as much early on. And part of the reason it's so good at switching in is, of course, Spike's immunity, obviously. I can't harp on that point strong enough. But also, because it's got that EQ immunity, of course, but it also uses its flying typing uh, to do things like resist flying. And uh, unlike... Um, Resist flying. Fighting, sorry, not flying. <laughs> uh, Zapdos is the one that resists flying, and so does Skarmory. But Zapdos uh, does not weaken the power of Heracross's Megahorn, or, you know, whatever Focus Punch it's switching into. Uh, and Skarmory does not resist fighting, whereas Salamence both weakens Heracross's Megahorn and threatens it a lot more directly than Drill Peckless Zapdos does, and also uh, has that fighting resistance that uh, Skarmory lacks. So, uh, it's really easy for it to get in and tango with so much, because it's very fast for advance, just like Zapdos. Uh, you know, a lot of offensive Pokemon, those bruisers like the Titars and Metagrosses and offensive Swamperts, they're not very fast. You know, even something on the faster side, like an offensive Suicune, it's not that fast, or, or a Heracross. And uh, Salamence, like Zapdos, zips by them and gets in and starts dishing the pain out. So, uh, yeah, it's, actually, it's kind of a succinct summary. I mean, there's so much about Mentz that's amazing, but that's basically it. Uh, it also goes to say, or helps to say that, um, most of these flyers are very good with spikes because, you know, Zapdos and Salamence in particular, they tend to not have spikes immune counters. 
and that's uh, part of why they pair so well with them. If you're immune to spikes, and you, I realize this is kind of turning into a treatise about uh, spikes being good, but that's why flyers are so good in part. That's a big part of their competitive legacy. Uh, if you are immune to spikes, and you have counters that take spikes, then you can very easily outlast, overwhelm, generally outmaneuver the opponent. It's such a significant advantage if you can, uh, you know, uh, not wield it right, because it's so easy to use that it's almost not about wielding it right so much as not a uh, so as yeah so much as it is not messing up the advantage you get with it kind of to, uh, I'm uh, oversimplifying a little bit oh yeah Mensa uh, gets in and I mean as long as you don't switch it in like a Breloom stun spore it's gonna be useful uh, it's also valuable as one of the few Pokemon that sw can switch into something like a um, like a Charizard Fire Blast, for example, without having to deal with spikes. Um, yeah, that was... Actually, that's something I should return to more in the Charizard Moltres section. But, uh, yeah, Mens does it all. It's wonderful. Aerodactyl, a foundational offensive presence in advance because it, it perfectly encapsulates that idea of beating down Pokemon that are, and naturally beating down Pokemon that are immune to spikes. Like, yeah, Zapdos doesn't care if there's three layers of spikes in the field, but Zapdos also doesn't want to take Arrow's Stab Rock Slide. And most Pokemon that do resist a Stab Rock Slide, you know, your Grounds and your Steels, then they take spikes damage. They get worn down, Arrow is immune to sand and spikes, it's not going anywhere, and late game, you know, it famously cleaves through teams. And, uh, incidentally, this is why something like uh, Defensive Flygon is so good, because it takes on Arrow uh, quite well, and it's immune to Sand and Spikes. Um, yeah. It's, uh, a lot of the dynamics of the tier are built around things like this, and this is why Flying types are such a big deal. Uh, Arrow used to run HP Flying on its CB set quite a bit, but then, over time, Bug became the new standard, not just because uh, destroying Celebi even harder was of paramount importance, even though it is, uh, but also because you get to hit Celebi and also hit Tyranitar switching in, uh, so you don't get Pursuit Trapped uh, for uh, too easily. And also, the super effective hit on Claydol has only become more important with uh, Doll's Rise in the tier. That's another video I gotta make. So yeah, generally Bug is more popular. Uh, than flying. Even fighting, I would say, is more popular than flying these days. That cold KO on a healthy uh, T-Tar is really, really big. And uh, let's Arrow act as a, an efficient DD Tar check, even if the thing's at full health. As long as you can prevent that second DD. So, uh, yeah. That flying... It, it, it's not going to use its flying typing for much beyond the, Well, I mean, no, I, I really shouldn't say that now, because even that EQ uh, pivoting thing is so much bigger now with how much more threatening EQ is in and of itself. So, uh, Charizard and Moltres, they've got fire flying typing, so they are spikes immune, and they uh, threaten uh, Skarmory for, uh, with stab, super effective damage like Zapdos does, but they also bring with them the ability to threaten otherwise difficult to KO Pokemon like uh, Metagross and Jirachi, even Celebi. Uh, their differences are not really for this video, but generally that's uh, their idea, and they also, they have more Pokemon that resist their hits while being spikes immune, but they can also mess them up. Uh, for example, Moltres has Will-O-Wisp, which just ruins everything that isn't, you know, a Charizard or a Moltres. Um, or ruins, or severely messes with, rather. Uh, but uh, Charizard doesn't have Will-O-Wisp, so if it wants to hit something like Mence or Gera, then it's going... Well, Mence, really. Uh, then it's going to have to run HP Ice and give up on its uh, anti-Swamp coverage, which it has been doing uh, more as of late. Uh, especially if it slots Toxic in there. I mean, Toxic is just good on it in general, but... Uh, yeah. And it, you really have a sense of how important Salamence is 
in terms of that whole, I want to uh, hit this, in terms of giving up HP grass, which is not an you know insignificant thing to give up. It's not just about uh, hitting Swampert, although that's big. It's about hitting Waters in general and T-Tar. It's that, you know, those Pokemon at least, uh, those T-Tars, those Waters, then they take Spikes damage, and Salamence does not, and Salamence tends to be the most threatening of the bunch. So, that's uh, how that comes about. Uh, the, Flyg the Flygon thing is big as well. So, yeah. Uh, Gyarados, finally. Gyarados is like Salamence, except it doesn't fear Ice Beam from Bulky Waters and Blissey. It's got a lot of problems. Uh, it's, it doesn't have that same anti, you know, it doesn't really fit well with Spikes, because its counters tend to be things like Zapdos and Aerodactyl, which, uh, you know, don't care about Spikes. And yeah, it can do things like Jolly, HP, Rock, and it needs Jolly to, um, to outrun Aerodactyl after a DD, but then it doesn't have Stab, and, you know, yeah, Double Edge is stronger than Stab, uh, HP Flying, but... You know, then you're not hitting Celebi super effectively, and the recoil of it all is still not very strong. And yeah, Gyarados just kind of feels like a mess of a Pokemon, because it's got so many good traits. I mean, the defensive profile, Water Flying with Intimidate, is wonderful. And it has its moments for sure. It's just frustratingly difficult to make work consistently. So, but it can be a threatening DD Sweeper. More often, it finds its use less as a terrifying late game cleaner, and more as a kind of utility Pokemon, just switching in and you know, slowing down an opponent's offensive assault. Like, it's very good against Charizard, for example. Uh, it's one of the best things you can throw at Charizard. You know, the thing is, you can't use Gyarados' defensive profile to switch into things and then sweep with it. That's kind of why uh, some players, messed, like Austin Matitos mainly, I think, messed around with uh, Choice Band Gyra, which... Uh, you know, it can be pretty good. It's not going to wow you with its power, but it'll do something. Um, and the upsides are obviously immense because it's immediately dangerous. Uh, again, faster pace, you know, more power. And the flying types here are very, very uh, emblematic of that. All right, speaking of faster pace and more power, we move on to Gen 4. And that, of course, brings Stealth Rock. So, uh, I guess someone at Game Freak was like, you know, those flyers are a little too good. Because nobody was thinking, oh yeah, let's nerf the bug types. Or, or the ice types. Or the fire types, even. Especially because, you know, Heatran and Infernape got introduced in the same generation. You know, but, you know, even the fire types before, they weren't exactly, you know, super dominant. No, the people were definitely looking at the flyers and going, yeah, these are a little too good. Especially since uh, rocks were introduced in the same generation as Roost. Uh, and, you know, I sh shudder to imagine uh, flyers with roost, you know, without rocks. You know, it's, uh, they'd be very difficult. Now, uh, fighting becomes even more uh, prominent in the metagame with the addition of close combat, you know, with the superpower more widely distributed on Pokemon like uh, Scizor and Breloom. And... Being able to resist things like that in CC are really important. So, flyers uh, take up, well, uh, Aerodactyl doesn't really take the role of a flyer uh, in this gen because its role was more limited. Get rid of Charizard. Uh, we want to add Gliscor. It's a big, big deal. Yeah, uh, now Skarmory obviously is an amazing Pokemon. Uh, not because it resists fighting, but for other reasons. Salamence uh, gets slashed in with D Knight because Immense eventually gets banned, and D Knight replaces it. Uh, but that's generally the idea. And there are other cool flyers like uh, Crobat is very fun. Uh, but these are generally the core flyers. I mean, Togekiss just never quite had the typing to leave a truly lasting impact on OU. Fun as it can be on occasion, or threatening even. But it's, uh, yeah, it's, there's a reason it's OU by technicality. Uh, yeah. Even my beloved Star Raptor, unfortunately. So, Zapdos is terrifying as ever because it doesn't just uh, receive... I mean, in terms of flying types getting buffed, then you also have uh, Brave Bird's introduction, speaking of Star Raptor, 
but none of the OU flyers really use it. So sad Arrow doesn't get it. That'd be great. Uh, the most you'll get sometimes is Power Herb Sky Attack on Arrow to completely trounce Machamp leads. Uh, this past SPL, we even saw my buddy Jirachi bring a Swords Dance Power Herb Sky Attack Gliss score, which, you know, explosive power. And I remember back in the day, Hitmon Lee used Sky Attack Power Herb Gliss score to destroy a uh, champ lead as well, while also just fading a standard Gliss score lead to get a Brox and things like that. But yeah, starting with Zapdos, I mean, Roost on Zapdos. Obviously, you're going to have to deal with the Stealth Rock factor, but. Instant recovery on this? Are you kidding? It's incredible. It also gets other amazing moves like U-Turn, and in Platinum it gets Heat Wave. Oh my goodness. Uh, but yes, Roost just makes sub Zapdos the most nightmarish thing ever in conjunction with pressure, and uh, makes it you know able to dish out uh, its obnoxious tool of tricks even more so, with even greater ease. Uh, it can even trade in uh, Thunderbolt for the extra paralysis of Discharge, which is nuts. It can do all uh, run all sorts of items. I mean, Lefties is the go-to to offset Sand, obviously, but and uh, to heal outside of Sand. But I mean, we've seen a lot of items on Zapdos. I mean, Choice Specs, Thun Thunderbolt, still a terror. Uh, yeah, Roost is obviously you know a game changer for Skarm. It's not so much uh, important for its flying typing in terms of resisting uh, fighting. Because uh, it doesn't do that so much as its steel typing is more important now for resisting dragons. So we won't get into that too much. But Skarmory is still very important because part of the reason it is able to withstand that dragon onslaught, even when it is getting um, worn down passively for the first time ever now with uh, Stealth Rock. <coughs> Excuse. Uh, with Stealth Rock, then it's able to heal it off thanks to Roost. Which means that you can't... I mean, with Protect's power... Oh, uh, Scarm uses Brave Bird, obviously. Oh my god, that's embarrassing. I'm sorry. Um, but it's not really an offensive threat. you know. But it is an upgrade from Drill Peck. Although, some players uh, still prefer Drill Peck on their Skarmories. Just because, generally, you're not hitting too hard with it. So you don't mind the recoil. But at the same time, you want to uh, mine as much Lefty's recovery out of your Skarm as possible. You don't want to you know, be offsetting it with your own Brave Bird recoil. So, uh, yeah, but that's, that's a choice. Um, yeah, Roost, uh, okay, so in advance you can't beat down Skarmory because of Protect and everything, but the power level is a lot higher in DPP, and Skarm still manages to wall the Daylights out of entire teams because of Roost. I mean, now you're shrugging off things like Gyarados and Stab Waterfall, which is oh, a cr very strong attack. And uh, physical defense of Skarm just says, no, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. You know, barring flinch action, of course. Uh, yeah, Gyarados doesn't have Roost, but it does have Intimidate in conjunction with a close combat resistance, which is wonderful, helping it take things on like uh, Lucario and Infernape. And it also actually has a flying stab in the form of Bounce. Not Now, it's not going to be a go-to move because of the whole two-turn effect, but it can be very uh, irritating. Because it's actually stronger than Waterfall, first of all, which is funny. And uh, it actually hits things like uh, Starmie that would uh, resist it. I mean, you, you want to mix in other moves for your uh, complementary water uh, coverage. or uh, That's not the word. Um, your, mo your coverage to complement water, uh, like Double Edge or Ice Fang or Outrage, uh, to, for things like Latios and Zapdos and Breloom. But uh, Bounce... This is very, uh, you know, it's less common now with Protect being so common, but, you know, on, even on things like uh, Breloom, but, yeah, it's a, still a very viable option. And, yeah, Physical Special Split and Gera finally use uh, Water Stab is wonderful. So, uh, excuse me, yeah, you can't use Gera... I mean, there was a time where Rest Talk Gera was the stall Pokemon with Rest Talk Roar Waterfall. Uh, there was a time where it w its defensive role was, you know, considered something you almost couldn't give up on stall. But uh, generally, that was when players found it easier to consistently keep Stealth Rock off. And once that stopped being a thing, then you're like, yeah, well, I I can't rely on Gyarados uh, defensively if rocks are going to be up, and it's using rest to heal 
and so that completely died out. So now uh, Garrett still has a very good defensive profile, of course, but you're using it more offensively, you know, whether it's with this or with choice band, whatever it may be, then you are going to use it, uh, you know, again, faster pace, stronger power. So you use it to thwart that early game Lucario or Breloom or whatever, uh, and then you get in and you CB Waterfall or you aggressively go for DD and try to take as much of the opponent's team down with you as possible. It's not meant to be a long-term wall. Similar story for Dragonite. It doesn't have Intimidate to, uh, you know, <coughs> excuse, effectively beef up that defense stat, but it, like Gyarados, has that... Uh, resistance to fire as well as fighting, which in Infernape's heyday was a very valuable set of traits to have. Uh, as well as Dragonite, of course, being incredibly threatening because it has the defining stab type of Gen 4 and 5, Dragon. So whether it's Draco Meteoring or Outraging or, you know, uh, CB Outraging or, you know, DDing and whatever, it can uh, go a lot of different ways. It's a very good Pokemon, and the flying typing, again, it, it does have Roost, so if you want, you can use it defensively more, more reliably. It's just that with Latias in the tier, then generally you will prefer that over D-Knight, you know, lacking. I mean, D-Knight doesn't have the Pursuit weakness, but, you know, the Rock's weakness is, you know, not much uh, better in that regard. Uh, if, you know, you, you can make a case for either one, but generally there's a reason Latias is more consistent, especially because Latias has much higher special defense, and it only has a two times weakness to ice, whereas Dragonite is deathly afraid of that. And, uh, that means Latias can take on things like Suicune, which, uh, D-Knight couldn't dream of. So, yeah, D-Knight as a defensive Pokemon... Sometimes, Heal Bell is a very cool move it has over Latias, but by and large, it is used for its offensive onslaught. The offensive onslaught has very little to do with its flying typing, though. It's, I mean, the Spikes immunity is great. A lot of the time, when you're facing a stall team, you want them, you want to force them into positions where their rocks are denied, or at least heavily punished. But the denying thing is especially good, because if they get their Skarman early in the game, then, and spikes go up first, because Skarm can run rocks, often does, but by and large, it tends to uh, be spikes only, because you, you like it when uh, your hazard is spread out over multiple Pokemon, not too much burden on one Pokemon, you know, uh, not to say you can't, but, you know, not, not to go down that rabbit hole too far, but uh, with the... Um, yeah, if you spike early in the game without rocks, then yeah, spikes are nice, but now d -Knight is in, and, or, you know, even uh, Gyarados coming in on rocks, like, if your rocker is Heatran and Gyarados comes in before the rocks actually go up, since it comes in on that turn, then it's threatening, you know, a lot of dealing with these terrifying flying types is, you know, largely, uh, thanks to rocks, you know, that's, I mean, rocks would be on pretty much every team, I know in DPP they are, they are on every team, even if they didn't hit Flyer super effectively, but, I mean, with the power of Flyers, it's not even a debate. You, you absolutely have to. So, uh, Arrow. Arrow is mostly known for its leading capabilities. The flying typing doesn't really do much for it. It's had its, you know, some really great moments uh, as a non-lead, uh, but it's not really a... Uh... <coughs> Yeah, its gr its greatest moment was probably when it's uh, Roost sets with the special defense boosted sand, letting it shrug off Draco Meteors from Flygon um, with the sub Roost set that I favored. Then it was like a perfect mixed Flygon answer. So, uh, yeah. But that, it's other than that, it's uh, there's not much to go into about Arrow in terms of the flyingness of it all. Gliscor, on the other hand, it really makes that spikes and sand immunity go. For it all the way, Roost, Taunt, it's, you know, Stab EQ as well. I mean, Ground Flying is just such an incredible typing. They complement each other so well. You know, whenever, whenever you have a Flying type that's not weak to Stealth Rock, like Skarmory, uh, or um, Sandstorm, also like Skarmory, and unlike Skarmory, Gliscor has the Fighting Resistance still. So, it's, uh, 
It's a fantastic Pokemon. It can go all the way bulky. It can go all the way fast. Offensive has been uh, propping, co or, sorry, uh, cropping up with a greater frequency and success uh, as of late. But by and large, Gliscor is a defensive Pokemon. But even though it's defensive, it's not slow or weak or pass. Excuse me, passive. So uh, that's why it's so good. You know, its trademark is Earthquake, Roost, Taunt, and then Filler. You know, pick your favorite. Uh, back in the day, it used to use Toxic, yeah, but it could also Rocks, uh, U-Turn. You know, start people started running a. Uh, Aerial Ace and then Wing Attack for Breloom, but you know that Ice Fang is generally more reliable. You know it, it can do it all. Knock Off became uh, popular. Amazing Pokemon. You know it can do it all. So uh, yeah, this is it's different uh, from the other Flyers because you know Skarmory is pure defense more or less, and the other Flyers are usually pure offense, and they've got the Stealth Rock weakness. Now Gliscor is still definitely more defensively leaning than offensive, but it's, it still strikes the most balance. Alright, Gen 5. Stealth Rock, even more important now, as Dragonite gets this ability called Multi-Scale, as if you needed even more incentive to keep its health below 100. Uh, Zapdos, not that it didn't have its place at times, but, you know, there was this Pokemon called Thunderous, and then that got banned, and then in Black and White 2, there's this Pokemon called Thunderous Therian, so... Gliscor gets more annoying than ever because it has Poison Heal now, so you don't even uh, wear it down with Toxic. Or, uh, you know, not that it would let you most of the time anyway because it had Taunt, but you know, now it actively welcomes it. It heals even more. You can't threaten it with other status. Ugh, nightmarish. Uh, so it's just, you know, your standard Gliscor, but a million times more annoying. Uh, Gyarados's niche is more limited. Uh... I mean, Skarmory is Skarmory. It's, it's not really changing. And then you... But for the first time in Gen 5... Uh, oh, in addition to Gliscor, you also have Landorus Therian, uh, which is not much for the flying-type nature of its offense, but obviously it's got that ground-flying thing of Gliscor is going for it. But was it, what's interesting about Gen 5 is that we have an OU Pokemon for the first time that is purely offensive in Tornadus. Uh, and you finally have, you know, an amazing stab move in Hurricane, which is a big reason uh, why rain teams are so scary. Now, Tornadus itself uh, was not an OU Pokemon proper, although it was always a threat in OU. It was always commonly seen. You know, nobody ever said, oh, you don't have to prepare uh, for Tornadus because it's a UU Pokemon. No, God, no. It's so fast. It's so It's got that thunderous incarnate speed. Good Lord, terrifying. Um... But yeah, what happened in Black and White 2 was that Tornado Therian came around, and it was really, really fast, and uh, faster than Scarf Titar even, and uh, faster than Alakazam even, and a little weaker, but hey, Stab Hurricane in Rain, you know, it's an utter terror, <coughs> you know, whether you Specs, Life Orb, you turning Focus Blast, whatever, Hurricane just destroyed everything. That's actually when uh, Zapdos was at its best, when uh, Torrent T was around, because it was one of the few reliable counters, quote unquote. Um, yeah, and uh, Torrent T was, you know, for the first time we had a flying type that, because I mean, Salamence was a flying type too, good for the tier in Gen Four, but it wasn't really much about its flying type, you know, like, uh, in, if anything, its flying type was one of the things that people used against it. Uh, like, oh, you know, it's Stealth Rock Week, so that makes it more susceptible to being revenge killed by priority, like Scizor's Bullet Punch. And then you're like, yeah, and also kills everything, so. And that same flying typing, of course, gives it the, uh, CC, or the Close Combat Resistance alongside Intimidate, that same trait of, uh, Gyarados's, except Salamence is also faster and has Roost. So, you know, there was a lot of good flying typing going on for it, but by and large, that flying typing was in service of the dragon type terror that uh Salamence would unleash whereas with torn t then it is pure flying through and through you know uh that e the eq immune the toxic spikes immune that that all stuff is great but it's using that so it can get on the field and spam stab flying i mean this was not exactly new to anyone who'd ever played a uu tier before 
in Gens 4 or 5 where Staraptor was allowed and just Brave Bird it over everything. Or uh, Honchkrow in Gen 4 for those who remember that, which was similarly terrifying. Uh, but here in OU for the first time, like, yeah, Black and White 1, people are like, oh, yeah, that hurricane is really something. I mean, a D Knight was usually C, B, or D, D in Gen 5, but sometimes it even uh, popped up on rain teams and used Hurricane. And that was also really thre uh, threatening. But, I mean, with Tornadus, it was a whole other level. And with, then with Torn T, yeah, like, yeah, it's a little weaker, but it was also so much faster. And Regenerator, oh, my God. And you couldn't even wear it down passively anymore. You know, suddenly you had a flying type that took, that got health back with Stealth Rock on the field. Now, okay, it would never actually be above 75% if Stealth Rock was on the field, but it's still gaining health, It's which is ridiculous. So, yeah, uh, Torn T, too much for the tier. And then, you know, regular Tornadus was also uh, quite nightmarish to deal with. You know, you, uh, that Hurricane Spam is really something. It's such a powerful move. I mean, that it brings to mind, uh, it's the same principle as RBY, or I guess not just necessarily RBY, but Moltres with that uh, base 20, 125 special attack and um, and uh, 120 base power stab. Yeah. Now, Thunderous Therian and Thunderous Incarnate, they weren't really much for the flying type offense of it all. Uh, neither was Landorus Incarnate. I mean, I guess Scarf Landorus Incarnate did use fly sometimes, which is hilarious. But it wasn't really anything you saw consistently or seriously. So it, they're, again, using their flying typing more that whole... The spikes immunity, the T-spikes immunity, especially good when Tentacruel is constantly littering the field with those in Gen 5. And uh, if you can punish a Scarf EQ... I mean, Scarf EQ is one of the most common moves to lock into, or Band EQ as well, but, you know, Scarf especially. Or a superpower on something like Scarf T-Tar. And then, you know, nothing punishes that like a flyer, and Thunderous and Landorus are particularly good examples of that. You know, are they agility or rock polish or sub, and, you know, they're off to the races. So, yeah, uh, but that's just more of uh, the flying typing's innate qualities as much as, you know, so I'm really harping on Tornadus here because finally it's a flyer that's really unleashing flying terror as opposed to using the flying type to accentuate its better, or its other, more offensive type. So, yeah, and that's why I also really like uh, Hurricane Dragonite. Uh, Gen 6, then Torn T takes on a whole new form, a very unique form, uh, in Assault... I mean, people have been using Rocky Helmet in uh, more recent times as well, but AV Torn is still its go-to because it lets you soft-check pretty much every special attacker. Uh, you know, from things like Keldeo to... <coughs> excuse, Mega Alakazam, you know, to Specs Latios, th things you don't actually resist, you know, as well as making you even better at taking in things you already do mess with, like Superior. And, I mean, you've got this amazing utility uh, move pool with U-Turn and Knockoff. You know, Hurricane gets its base power lowered a little, but eh, who cares? There's no more permanent rate, and who cares? It's It's got so much cool stuff it can run. And uh, it's a very unique defensive Pokemon in that as power creep goes on, then you're not hard countering things as much as you are playing around them. And Torn T is a perfect example of the kind of Pokemon you would use to do that. Of course, then you still have, you know, spef uh, specially defensive Poison Heal Gliscor, you know, countering the living daylights out of everything, but hey, that's something else. Uh, Thunderous Incarnate winds up being the more prominent Thunderous form in Gen uh, 5, or Gen 6, sorry, because Prankster Thunder Wave is good and it's not broken enough to get banned this time. And. <laughs> Although some people wanted to for a little bit uh, at the end of XY. Uh, but yeah, Gyarados... Uh, now Gyarados sometimes even sheds its... Uh, or usually when it's used, it sheds its flying typing for its uh, Dark-type Mega. And it has an interesting dynamic because sometimes you're going to want to hit regular Gyarados with a move that the uh, Dark-type you know doesn't mind at all. Or uh, more, I think more common is that you're going to try and hit the, you know, Dark Gera because it's stronger and bulkier, so you're going to hit that for, a you know, an effective move. And if it, you always uh, fear it's going to not Mega Evolve, 
and uh, then you just wind up thudding into the flying type. So it's a unique application of that flying typing. Uh, you know, potentially getting rid of it, potentially holding on to it. Skarmory, as, as you know, it's it's Skarmory. It's it's still doing the same things as always. Um, yeah, Dragonite not as uh, powerful in the age of the Fairy type, but still still quite good. And uh, in fact, the new uh, prominence f flying type is well, uh, Talonflame at first, of course, but sadly Talonflame did not last. I mean. At first, when Gen 6 comes out, people are like, oh, Talonflame, this is the new flying type. It's, you know, it's even got an ability. Uh, first of all, Brave Bird is its stab, of course. And uh, Gale Wings, its ability is all about being flying. I mean, it's more of a flying type than a fire type. Like, uh, a lot of its sets don't even run a fire move. Because it's, I mean, Will-O-Wisp, yes. But you could very feasibly run Brave Bird, Roost, Taunt, Swords Dance. You know, and even the sets that do run Flare Blitz... Or Will O Wisp, you know, it's Will O Wisp is spammable because it's Will O Wisp, but it's not fire stab, it's not dealing damage. And even the sets that do run flare blitz, like offensive SD or um, or choice band, then they're not spamming flare blitz. Brave Bird is its go-to move. I mean, offensive SD sets. What boosting item do they use? Sharp Beak, and that's because Gale Wings gives flying moves priority. This extends to Brave Bird. This extends to Roost. So even if you are at one percent HP against a choice scarfed opponent you're gonna roost first so uh yeah and uh yeah the problem with talon flame is as great as it is it's fast it's quite bulky actually it's naturally fast and that's nice but because of priority flying moves you don't even need to run um speedy v's on it you're gonna roost first anyway uh, you're gonna brave bird things first anyway you know, make sure there's nothing that you need to outspeed a Will-O-Wisp and you're good. And very rarely is that the case. So, you can you know, taunt, wow, roost. Uh, you know, especially defensive for things like Zard Y, who's another flag type we'll get to in a second. Uh, or, you know, sometimes people are using physical defense for physical defense for Psyshock, Mega Gardevoir, and for uh, Weavile. Especially Itemless, which also helps you deal with things like Bisharp, you know, Mega Metagross. Um... But the problem is, of course, that Talonflame is only as good as your anti-Stealth Rock support. And as many tiers over the years have shown, preventing Stealth Rock is insanely difficult. Keeping it off is even tougher uh, if you're playing with a team that tries to go for a longer game. And as soon as those rocks are up, Talonflame... Talonflame's viability does not decrease in half. It, it goes down to, you know, not near zero, but not too far off from it either. And that's why Talonflame went from, you know, the face of Gen 6 OU to almost unseen in uh, the modern day. Which is really sad, because it's a very cool Pokemon. It's very unique as far as Fire Flying goes. Because Fire Flying in the past is just, you know, big, strong, uh, special attacker, whereas Talonflame had a lot more guile to its game. Uh, but, yeah. And what about Mega Charizard Y, you ask? Well, uh, Mega Charizard Y, well, not really using Flying Stab, it's not really an Air Slash Pokemon, it at least has such absurd power that it's guaranteeing that it's dropping the opponent. You know, not, nothing wants to take Sunny Fire Blast from uh, Mega Charizard Y, whereas Talonflame is actually kind of weak. Uh, base 81 attack is lower than Amoongus. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, yeah, meanwhile, you look at Mega Charizard Y with this screamingly high special attack stat backed by Sun, uh, and, uh, Sun, which also activates perfect grass coverage for, uh, anti-waters, for an anti-water, uh, effect, even. So, yeah, no, uh, it's an absolute nightmare. I mean, it doesn't love the rock's weakness either, but the reward generally tends to be higher than the than uh, Talonflames by a long shot. Funnily enough, you have that Gyarados-esque effect of... Uh, but if you have Mega Charizard X, and like you've DD'd, 
but you don't want to become Fire Dragon yet. Like, let's say against Clefable's Moonblast this is the most common example. Because as a Fire Flying type, you resist Fairy. So Clefable's Moonblast is not going to do very much to you. Um, and sometimes you might want to hold on to that. If, as opposed to going for the Mega and... You know, you can kind of mess with the opponent that way. Uh, in a similar fashion. So... Uh, that is Gen 6. Oh, there's also Pinsir. Yeah, Pinsir's a, a very... You know, it's it's tough to use because not much or almost nothing in the way of defensive presence. But it's so strong. I mean, it's got the priority... I mean, there's a reason why it used to be on Burb Spam with Talonflame. You had two uh, flying-type priority users. It's really strong. Stab Return hits insanely hard. I mean, look at that attack stat. And with, pr um, no, sorry, not, uh, uh, not all of, uh, Pinsir's moves are priority. I, I just realized what it sounded like. No, it's got quick attack. But, uh, Pinsir's got the, uh, Pinsir's also very naturally fast. Uh, or not very, it, it, it is naturally fast. But it's got the right priority for faster Pokemon. Like, yes, Keldeo is faster, but Keldeo also gets eviscerated by quick attack. And Pinsir's still plenty fast enough. I mean, it gets the jump on, uh, Mega Charizard Y's base 100, for example. Uh, if so that its return is slicing through neutral targets as well, um, and you have quick attack for things like Keldeo and Superior and Frailer, you know, and, and uh, if you really want to lean into the powerful priority thing, some players even use Adamant and really lean into that strong quick attack, so you're more able to pick off things like Tornadus, Mega Alakazam, and yeah, with SD it just becomes uh, an absolute monster to deal with. So, yeah, Pinsir is a tough Mega to make work. Because unlike something like the hyper-spammable Mega Metagross or Diancie, then it's not very easy to slap on a team because it's not going to be bringing a lot of support. It requires the support instead. But, uh, yeah, it's a, it, it, it's a monster for sure. Uh, Zapdos also returns to OU. And it's always in kind of a weird place because it's never really going to overwhelm. But as a defensive Pokemon, it is quite good and can be very irritating to a lot of teams. It was more relevant when Bird Spam was a big deal, when Talon Pinsir teams were everywhere because Zapdos would sit on them. Now they're not so much, but uh, Zap so Zapdos' role is more limited, but... It can, you know, you don't want to rely on it as a defogger too much because that can be very easily taken advantage of. But if you, you can run static on it, because uh, you can't run static and uh, defog in Gen 6. But if you can run static on it, nothing punishes Torn T, U turning, and knocking off more. It's, it's, uh, yeah. Or, you know, just something like, even something like Bisharp. Yeah, so uh, Zapdos is also like Torn T in the sense that it's not really hard countering much. But it can help you play around things like Superior really, really nicely. Flying types are so important in Gen 6, actually, that Superior commonly runs HP Rock as coverage. You know, HP Rock, that's not really... I mean, what else has ever used that as coverage? Well, Volcarona sometimes in Gen 6 as well, but that was much rarer. Nowadays, it'd be a lot more uh, practical to pair Volcarona with HP Rock Superior. So, you know, you uh, blast through Zard Y, you rip through Torn, and... It's just generally good coverage alongside grass. So, yeah. Uh, finally, I'm just going to give Gen 7 a cursory thing, because that's about that's where I start checking out. Aerial gets nerfed, unfortunately, in Gen 7. Um, yeah, I uh, should also mention the applicability of Roost. Uh, speaking of Megas potentially messing with their flying typing, Roost does the same, of course. Should have mentioned that a while ago. Oops. Um... And sometimes you have those, like if you have Scarb, it gets to slower Pokemon with EQ. Sometimes you don't want to Roost because then you, they can actually threaten you with EQ. Uh, so it's a game of, you know, do I Spike? Do I Roost? Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. Wasn't that big a deal. <coughs> so in Gen 6, you finally have Landorus Theriot and actually running Flying Stab. Um... Uh, and, you know, Gyarados starts running it a lot more commonly as well because of fly Z, so they can run fly, or in Gyarados' case, it's bounce, but in Lando's case, then you have fly Z, and there it is. 
you have Fly AMZ, and suddenly you have this, you know, super jacked up supersonic Sky Strike, and it becomes, you know, suddenly Lando goes from having one vicious stab move to two, and that makes it a lot more difficult to deal with. And there are Pokemon that resist both uh, EQ and uh, Fly or Sky Strike, of course, but you know, Zapdos or something isn't really going to love, um, you know, Stone Edge. And, uh, you know, so it, d it depends on the Lando set. Sometimes Landos are fine with being walled by Zapdos' and Rotoms because they'd rather just get rocks and U-turn or maybe they have a teammate to help with them, things like that. Basically, the fact that it's even an option makes uh, Lando even more terrifying because uh, you can completely wipe something like Tangrowth off the map. Uh, yeah. Uh, Gliscor, uh, Gyarados does uh, the same thing with Flying MZ. Tornadus is a great user of Flying MZ because it gives its... A hurricane, a very valuable power boost. Uh, Tornadus also gets Defog, like every other flying type. And uh, Ultra Sun and Moon. Or what well, felt like every other flying type and Pokemon in general in Ultra Sun and Moon. Um, which is, of course, helpful. Uh, and Defog is a flying move. But you don't really think of it as much because you know, also things like um, Rotom Wash and the Lottie Twins use it. <coughs> Excuse. Uh, but yeah... Fly, uh, hurricane accuracy is also bypassed with Fly and Z to say nothing of the wonderful, uh, power boost. Yeah. So, it's, so now you have something like Torn T versus Zard Y, whereas previously it's like, oh, hurricane's down to 50 accuracy. Here it's like, I'm gonna hit Zard Y no, uh, guaranteed, and I'm gonna hit it harder. Of course, Zard Y is still a massive threat, uh, especially with the increased defog distribution. And Hawlucha is another, uh, this is another unique uh, flying type. Now, it's not entirely uh, flying in its assault, but fighting flying is fantastic coverage uh, if you've got the power to back it up because it hits so much neutrally, and it does. So, you get your terrain uh, you, you get your terrain up, you activate your seed, you got Unburden going, and then it is off to the races, especially because it's a physical attacker that can't be stopped by Lando T., uh, and, yeah, I mean, you can also run Drain Punch over Roost if you want, if you don't want to deal with the whole high jump kick into protect thing. Uh, but yeah, Hallucha is a very, it's tough because you, you don't want to switch it in more than once, so once you're, once it's in, you really got to commit. I mean, it takes a good deal of precision, because you really got to, uh, commit to getting as much as possible, uh, out of it once you're in, which means you really got to be careful about when you send it in. But, um, yeah, that's, uh, uh, Hawlucha is pretty simple in that regard. It's a very cool Pokemon. It's, it's tough to make work, but very rewarding. Maybe not tough to make work so much as uh, operates in more limited capacities. And, uh, I also saw that, well, Zapdos is, uh, <coughs> excuse, uh, quite good as well, but also Pelipper. You know, it, it, it's flying typing really irritates it because of that whole, uh, Stealth Rock weakness, which... You know, it, it's the one thing Politoed has over it. I mean, yeah, okay, Roost is great, but I think Pelipper would take uh, having no Stealth Rock weakness and, you know, if it just got to use, like, uh, Protect over Roost, if it got to keep U-Turn, so. Uh, but, yeah, Pelipper could actually be kind of threatening because uh, it has Stab Hurricane, so, you know, maybe not. Like, Specs Pelipper doesn't extend the rain as long. Which is uh, obviously a big deal. But Stab, uh, it's Hydro Pump actually hits quite hard. And Stab Hurricane is very complimentary because you can't resist that Stab Hydro Pump with Grass types because they'll get clocked by Hurricane. And um, yeah, it's nice even as a supplementary tool on the standard bulky Pelipper sets. Alright, that's uh, pretty much everything for me. I should really probably go uh, nurse my voice a little bit. So thank you so much for tuning in. I am glad to be back. And let me know about all those things I said at the beginning of the video. And I will see you again in the next one, which will be soon.